Now with this done, I'll be able to pick up the cart. Should be able to carry it fairly easily. Take that back with me and get a couple more uh, items traded. That'll be the last one. There we go. Nice. There we are. That's a little bit of a difficult place to wander through. What on earth has happened to the graphics there? My goodness. Looks like I'm playing. Why is the cart so bad? <laughs> Looks like I'm suddenly playing Monkey Island. My goodness. The trees seem okay. Strange. Are we doing this as equal friendly as possible? Um kind of by necessity really but um i don't think uh everyone is, is necessarily uh working to that goal i think leafin may actually be tempted to find out just how bad it can be hmm no definitely looks like graphics have gone the way of the dodo mm, field of view brightness view distance or actually i wouldn't mind the view distance being up Uh, level of details, shadow quality. I don't really care too much about shadow quality, honestly. Let's go to 200%. Just see how this goes. Now I've got twice as much, much jaggedness on the edges. How glorious. <laughs> oh, my Lord. It was a river shark, yes. Um, I've brought some items for Lady She Love, though. I'm going to leave a decent amount of fuel in here for her to run her fires with. Oh, what are these? Got some rice. Nice. Now, with my uh, She Lab credits, let's go ahead and grab some stuff. Um. Never mind plenty of these bulbs. Then decent amount of charred meat. Perfect. All right, I think I'm good. What well, in-game day are we on now? This is the very first day. All right, so with that done, uh, now the nearest trees to Inflectus are actually a little ways away. We would have to go over some elevations, which is difficult with the cart. I think it may be better for us to head over to Tyrants because there's so much more, um, there's so many more uh, trees nearby. I've still got a fair bit of uh, carrying capacity yet, so should be okay. Now I'm I'm very much wondering. Let's have a look at what the difference is if we drop the uh, level of detail back down to a hundred percent. Has that actually made any kind of difference here on the models of the plants? Doesn't look like it.
Yep, I've got my cart with me. It's in my backpack. Little farm down here. And here we go. Now, I should be able to produce quite a lot of wood here. Let's ferry that back and forth and make a bit of cash and buy the remaining items that I wanted. Okay, I can't chop a pyre. They are non choppable very well. I can see why so many people took logging, because realistically, oh my lord. Another silly huge tree. On the plus side, it is actually falling down towards me, so you know, there is that. Or was. Uh, if I can get this to fall down toward the car, that is going to make life so much easier for me. Hooray! Perfect. Ah! Game is getting angry with me. Ooh, looks like we've got a mason. Ultimately, I do want mortared stone because of the uh, where I'm going to be, uh, how I'm going to be um, sort of uh, tiling the internals of the the mountain home. But probably make my own for now, since I'm focusing on going the. Mason root. Now another one of these gigantic trees again would be very nice. Have they tried nuking the asteroid though? You know what? Probably don't need to try. In a way. Because all I'd need to do is tell the dapplings there were trees on that asteroid. The rest sort itself out. Getting a little bit concerned about the quality of this axe, though. This reminds me of playing a tale in the desert. And uh, because making charcoal was actually kind of considered a, a pretty annoying job, took a decent amount of concentration and time to do. But I found it quite cathartic to do. And I also discovered I had a, a knack for it. I'd run several of the higher tier charcoal producing structures simultaneously just and I'd just be ha happy to sit there uh, watching the the um, the gauges change and, and uh, feeding fuel or, or suffocating the, the the fire where needed and 
as a result, I can't get through there, unfortunately. Um, unless, no, that would be a mistake. All right, let's go the other way then. But as a result, uh, I would make very good money in that game just by producing something that everyone needed, but no one really wanted to make. Now, there were other types of, of work that could be done. Some of it was very skill-based. One of them in particular was oh, uh, was bladesmithing because it was a, like a physics game. You had a model blade and you had to select which hammer you were going to use and how much pressure you were going to apply and it would deform the blade and, and the closer to the, the kind of like template that you could get the, the blade and the edge and the, the smoothness and the thickness of, of the blade, the better quality of the blade, the longer it would last. I heard tell of uh, one one player who was just really, really good at that particular game, at that particular skill. And they didn't really want to progress through the game's normal tech tree and, 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 and earn, you know, and build obelisks. And, and, and continue. they were just kind of happy just doing this one thing that they were really good at. But they were so good that they made a very very good business out of it because making the blades was genuinely quite difficult genuinely quite quite difficult to get to get perfect blades and, and the better the quality the, the better it, it it worked out for you and uh yeah he made uh, an awful lot of money uh what game am i talking about a tale in the desert it's uh, uh an mmo not too dissimilar from this to be perfectly honest is uh there's a general calamity and uh each telling required uh, like the game would reset but we're talking months. It would take months for the game to to run its course. Um, and in each telling, um, there would be some great calamity, and the idea was that all the people of Egypt would come together and and and, and do something to prove that they could work together, um, and thus they would uh, they would avoid the calamity. Um, really, really fun game. Super, super fun game, actually. Uh, it went through like each telling things would change um and one of the, the the changes which was introduced i wasn't a very big fan of um introduced levels so you couldn't just build up on certain skills um you needed uh to uh, have specific levels so you couldn't for example uh, just be like yeah i i like the uh, the discipline of architecture over the discipline of body and so i'm just going to do all the architecture stuff you couldn't do that, which was a bit of a shame, honestly. Um, I will buy one of these. Donk. Thank you. But yeah, no, they, they, it was a really, really enjoyable game overall. And uh, one of the things I, I like the most about it, if I'm perfectly honest, is, is just how relaxing the game was. It was a staggeringly good game in, term, in terms of just the atmosphere. Um, the various trials and, and tasks you needed to perform for example, the, the discipline of architecture, you might have to build obelisks, but every old player who ever built an obelisk, the costs went up for the next obelisk that would satisfy that discipline. And as you satisfied the disciplines, you'd, you'd effectively unlock new things that you could do. Um, so, you know, the sooner you built an obelisk, the better, because the costs for building one would be less. Yeah, they're on, currently on tail nine. Um, I haven't looked into it for a long time. The last time I, I heard it was on tail six or so. Very, very outdated graphics. It's not a game you play to for, for prettiness. It's a game you played for the game. Very much so. Game you played for the game. After some time, the chores do take over, yeah. And I remember one of my friends, uh, he worked in IT. This is way back when now. And uh, he confessed to me that, yeah, he, he got in, uh, I, his significant other kind of uh, got annoyed with him because he set an alarm for like one o'clock in the morning uh, to get up in order to... Um, Log in to water his garden in the game. 
I mean, you expect that a little bit from from anyone who's playing a, a uh, an idle game, and 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 it really did feel a bit like an idle game in some ways. Uh, but there was some amazing stuff in there. For example, the crossbreeding and the stress breeding of plants. Uh, one of the things that everyone needed was flax. Flax for lots of different things. Um, and through the tutorial, you were given a couple of flax seeds. You would, like the tutorial taught you how to, like the, the, the tutorial was basically, this is the game. You're on an island. There are limited available ability of resources, but there is no, there's no difference here. It's, it basically served as a, as a demo as well. Um, if you can get off the island, then you're on the main, the, the main, in the main game and the main server now. And so you had to basically build up and, and make a raft. And this took time. This took time and a lot of effort, actually. Um, actually, where am I walking? <laughs> I'm going somewhere very different from where I should be going. Uh, I need to go home. So I think it's over there. Maybe not quite as over there. But yeah, so uh, I always loved that because I had so much fun just playing the tutorial. Another game that, that was very similar was Saga of Rhizome. Awesome tutorial area. It's basically just a, a disconnected part of the, the main game. But in that area, you could do everything that, you know, you had resources to do. And they, they kind of carefully limited certain resources so you couldn't advance too far. But... There were some people who, who who didn't leave the tutorial area, not because they couldn't, but because they didn't want to. They were helping newbies. They were just enjoying life, being being the the person that that knew the ropes and could hand out uh, gear and stuff like that. And um, but yeah, they, they, one of the the tasks was to get flax. Everyone needed it for an awfully large amount of things. But the flax you needed to water it a certain amount of times. There was one that didn't need much watering, but didn't have very good yield. And there was one that needed a decent amount of watering and weeding, but gave a good yield. And uh, there used to be uh, a, a basically like it's it's built up of mini games, um, some of them less game and and more actual science, but uh, much the same way that you could get the um, yes, you can chop the old growth redwoods. Um, yep, yep, takes a lot to do, but is a lot of work. But uh, it was, you know, par partially science, and people would um, get different flaxes, and they would breed them in, in a way that would cause them to mutate. And then they would try and, and kind of compound uh, uh, desirable um, characteristics um, by breeding species of flax together that, that uh, they managed to come by, which were better than the default ones that like, pretty much everyone had. And... You know, depending on how how late into the telling you were, you you could end up with flax that didn't need any watering, didn't need any weeding. Also, it gave like a stupid amount of yield of flax. It grew within a day. Also, it gave like half of its yield as the second stage of flax, and all of this was possible just because the the system was designed around the ideas. Of, of the system rather than okay this flax does this this flax does that it's like okay well what are the characteristics of the plant all right well then let's create a system that can manage these characteristics and that was true of, of all the flowers and hence why well, my friend would get up late in uh, sorry uh, very early in the morning in order to water his garden because he was trying to hybridize plants and uh, if he missed one watering that that could be like a week's worth of work gone it was very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Hey, yeah, I can... the The game is still around, but... Every telling they change things, they you know tweak the the system. Uh, it was one of the first games that I ever came across where there was a completely player um, run, um, well, economy for for one thing. There was nothing in the game outside of the the kind of mechanical requirements of the disciplines, which is the whole point of the the story. Is the stranger challenged Egypt to proving that they could work together, and they were like massive mega projects. 
which required masters of the seven disciplines to work in unison to complete. Um, and mastering a discipline was quite hard because the discipline had seven different mastery levels. And each one was a complicated thing to 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 get to. The the obelisk building that I was talking about earlier, for example, or um, the... Uh, and, and some of these were really, really meta. For example, the... Um, the discipline of, um, I think it was the, the mind, or the discipline of worship, requires you to marry someone in-game. Now, that, that doesn't sound like, like much. A lot of MMOs are allowed to marry someone. But the way that they, they made this, like, the consequence matter is that when you married someone, first and foremost, you had to have certain gems, and you had to organize a coordinated ritual amongst um, X many other players. And so they would have to perform the ritual perfectly, and then you were married. And you sacrificed these gems of, of various worth. Now, the, the interesting part here is when you married someone, that person gained permanent access to your account. They could log in using your character, and you could log in as theirs. They could delete your character. You could delete theirs. It was trust. That was the, that was the point. You don't just marry someone. You find someone you trust implicitly. And the way that you'd manage that in a tale in the desert is you would give them the keys to the kingdom for you, for your character. There was the test of the demi pharaoh. Um, so one player would be given basically um, absolute veto authority on, on the laws. Like it could be used to the point of they could just straight up ban another player. If they ever did it, they would lose their powers, and that would be that. But you know the the, the demi fairs were voted. It was it was a popular vote, and these people had very very far ranging powers of 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 uh, legal and authority within the game. Uh, the legal system within the game was completely player run. You would have people would would make uh, would, would decide. Oh, I I want a uh, a law because people can gather wood from a tree. They could never chop them down. They, they could gather wood from a tree. And then X many days later, the wood would grow back. And later on, a technology which would be uncovered by players would have to donate um, X many materials to the, the various universities, and eventually later technology would be uncovered. Um, one of these later technologies was the ability to harvest a tree much more aggressively using an actual saw. And it could take up to seven days for that tree to recover. As a result, so anyone, if someone just wandered into an area where there were a couple of trees, because you can plant trees, they were static things on the map, and just clear cut all of them, well, screw everyone else in that area who might need wood for a billion other things, because there's now no regenerating wood nearby for like an hour's walk in game. Um, and so someone very quickly um, created a petition and uh, that said, okay. People cannot um, clear cut forests within X many um, X much distance of someone's camp or any of the like um, the public buildings, the, the like the universities in the game. They had to go around and they needed to get enough people to uh, sign their petition to say, okay, yeah, I back this rule. Then once they got enough signatures on that petition, they would then have to put it into uh, here. I will take you. Uh, they would put it into the, the the ballot, and then that would be voted on that week or, or, or X many days. Um, the whole, all players could walk up to like a ballot uh, box uh, dotted around the world, and they could see all of the all of the 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 laws that had managed to get enough signatures and and to be voted on, and then they could vote on them. At that point, the devs would implement those laws. Now they could veto it. Like if it for a technical reason uh, a rule couldn't be implemented or it was like you know prohibitively expensive to implement that kind of rule, they they'd veto it. Also, a few that were very out of place would be vetoed. But like some some people would grief the game and people would if they annoyed enough people they would they would simply get a petition together to ban them. And bear in mind this was a paid for subscription MMO. And if that, if enough people then voted on that law, it got voted straight into effect and that person got banned. But these laws could be really far ranging to the point that the devs would have to implement new code to make that law 
um, codify them, make, make that law, um, you know, to, to actually put in the mechanics so that law could be followed, so that law could exist. It was a very, very, very interesting game. And the legal system was one of the really, really nice things about it because it required full player cooperation. People had to, uh, you know, agree to these petitions. Someone had to write that petition so to, and want that law and then be charismatic enough or for it to be a law that everyone agreed with, or just, you know, that enough people were willing to stand with you because they liked you, or or, or you were you're particularly good at ex, uh, at uh, extolling the virtues of this law. And then it would get, get brought into effect. And uh, ECO has a very similar system to that in terms of the, the legal side of it. Now that, that game sounds like this, the same kind of spirit that created the fuel rat in Elite Dangerous. Player run initiatives affecting the game. Oh, cool. See, I, I, I've got Elite Dangerous. I never had the time to really get into it, which I really regret because I actually bought hot ass and everything to go along with it. I really enjoyed what I played of it, but I didn't have nearly enough time to dedicate to that one, unfortunately. I am home, base. It is okay. Let me get my food on the go. Right. Power. I have got many, many, many things to put in there. Right. First that, and then I would very much like to just pop in all of that. There we go. That should go for a while now. Oof. Okay, so I am home, and my home is, well, it is what it is. Uh, but we can make it better. Now, to make it better, I'm going to need to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to really need to... I'm going to need a cup. Well, three rooms currently. Four rooms, ideally. I think this one can be a general room, and it can effectively be like an entryway, a corridor deeper into the mountain, and then we can set up some rooms running off it. I think that's probably going to be the best way to set this one up. That's, my, uh, that's going to be my guess. So, with that in mind... First and foremost, well, actually, you know what? One of the things I can do is straight up place this cart in here. And I can use that to move quite a lot of other things around. Now, the other thing I can do is I can just make this a room. Temporarily. Like that. This is now a bedroom. And it's giving me plus two already. Then I can place a table down, of which I have two. Tonk, it's now giving me 2.6. Now the second table is going to perform less well. Now 2.9. And finally, I'm going to replace in my bench, right there. Tonk. It's now 3.2. Okay, you know, it's not amazing, but it'll do. Now, time for me to start expanding this room. Quite a lot, actually. But how are you doing, Ica? Hope you're doing well, mate. Drop this off. Now I can use that cart as basically a mobile storage room, so I can very easily just add things to it and then transfer them to the storages outside as you've seen me using with the uh, with the fire pit there if I do this I can just do this Womp. and suddenly they're outside very very convenient let's make quite a lot of room here though To be fair, though, those torches lasted a long time, which just goes to show how long I was out there. So I put, I loaded that with three torches before I left. Let's go and load those up again. Let's make a couple more torches. I feel rather players who decided to fly around saving stranded pilots around the galaxies. Nobody told them to. 
and there was not really anything incentivizing it in-game. But people did it anyway. Dads wound up putting a space station for the fuel rats into the game eventually as a way to honor them. That is fantastic. I really like that. That's actually really, really sweet. I like that a lot. Once those torches are done, I can get this rolling, which will help out a little bit more. Cool. Actually, how am I doing that? I'm not sure how far back I'm going to take this. I've got a fair bit of room that I can play with. And I would like to have some nice um, spacious rooms. Simply because the bigger the space, the more I can put into it. And thus the more valuable the room becomes as a whole. Ultimately I'm going to want four rooms, but this access corridor can act as one of them. Now. You can then have multiple other rooms as well. You don't need to just have a single bedroom, a single kitchen, so on and so forth. You can have quite a lot more um, if that if that's uh, what you want to do. For example, if I took this away, oh, first let me close that and let me pop in some torches. There we go. This room is now generating 3.4. If I take this away, it's now generating 2.8. But it's a general room now, rather than a uh, specific function. There we go, now it's back to being 3.4. We're going to want quite a few of these, if we can. Yeah. Let's get that out of there, and out of the uh, bench there. Perfect. Right. Now, the issue that I have is how much room I have to play with on each side. It's not a lot on that side. Really not that much. I could make it maybe a lavatory. Yeah, I can probably get away with a lavatory. Depending on how the, the walls come in on this side. Um, no, I think I think we could get a lavatory out there. And each new room adds to the house. And as you build up the, the quality of the house, the, the, the kinds of... Uh, Items that you have in there, the furnishings, and also the material it's made of, the more points you get. Uh, you can go very deep, uh, Rypox. Much, uh, you know, I'll make the comparison to games like Minecraft, where there's basically a bedrock, and that's the only thing that stops you. Ben, thank you very much for the raid there, mate. Jochen Vaur. What were you playing? And whilst you're answering that, come on, Dapplings, let's get some tea out. Make ourselves presentable. I might be living in a cave, but that doesn't mean that we're not civilized. In fact, it means I'm probably more civilized. An aesthetic existence. Leaving the scallywag. <sighs> World of Warcraft, marvelous. I haven't seen anyone playing that in a long time. I hope you are having fun. Ooh, nice. Okay, see that? Unprocessed fish. Will do. Now, <laughs> you can fish in this game with a fishing rod, as you can, might imagine. Uh, you can also fish in this game by shooting the fish with an arrow. Now, unlike 
Unlike uh, hunting game, if you're a hunter, you can go for headshots, and headshots hurt more, and they kill things faster. Fish don't suffer this particular weakness. So if you want to kill a shark by shooting it with arrows, be prepared for it to take quite a few. I think that's a complete thing.